And now we'll start to take a look at these four highs that I submitted. So the first high is that raw PTC positions can never be liquidated. Okay, this is the first uh, submission that I submitted. And now we will understand exactly why raw BTC position can never be uh, liquidated. So let's see. So the protocol is supposed to be deployed with supported collaterals as raw BTC and wrapped ETH. Now, the thing with uh, this protocol is that it assumes that all the tokens that will be supported are with 18 decimal numbers. As you can see it over here. Because you see the precision here, it's being used everywhere to determine the token price in USD and the number is IE18. So it, we use to multiply with this number and it, we assume that the tokens are with 18 decimal numbers. But if we actually go to RabBTC Etherscan, we know that RabBTC is not 18 decimal numbers. It's only 8 decimal numbers numbers and because it's eight decimal numbers it's gonna make a lot of issues and actually three of the issues that are reported are because we assume that all the collateral tokens are 18 decimal numbers and we use rub dc which is eight decimal numbers and it's gonna mix up with a lot of calculations and it makes a lot of issues and another cool thing that it's kind of like an alpha tip is take a look at the test file because what i did i basically went to the test file when i saw this and i had this suspicion i went to the test file and I went to the unit tests and DC engine dot tests and I searched for RAP BTC. I wanted to see if the RAP BTC tests are covered, right? Because if they are covered, I want to see how come it works, how come you can liquidate user, how come you can mint DSC tokens and deposit RAP BTC. And then what I found out, these are, these are tests that I wrote in Foundry uh, to check to do some POCs, but Apart from them, we can see that the only section where we are working with RAP BTC is commented out, which means that the RAP BTC tests are not completed. All right, so let's see how it works. So we know that RAP BTC is uh, 18 and 8 decimal numbers and RAP ETH is uh, 18 decimal numbers, right? This is RAP ETH. As you can see, 18 decimal numbers and RAP BTC is only 8 decimal numbers. So let's assume that we are a user that want to deposit RAP BTC to the protocol and start minting uh, DSC tokens, okay? So if we want to deposit uh, RAP BTC, we know that the contract will be deployed with RAP BTC as supported tokens. So we will call this deposit collateral and mint DSC, right? We want to deposit BTC and mint DSC tokens. Deposit collateral will be executed first. We'll go through all this check and then our mapping, we will add the amount. Now, I want to ask you guys here in the chat, this amount collateral is going to be in which decimal numbers? How big this number is going to be? It's going to be with 8 decimals or 18 decimals if we're going to deposit RBDC. What do you guys think? Exactly. It's going to be eight decimal numbers. So in our mapping, the number that we deposited with this RAP BTC is going to be eight decimal numbers. So if we deposited a thousand, one BTC, okay, then it's going to be one multiplied by, by IE8, right? So this is the amount that will be, or, or simply one with zero, eight, 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 eight zeros, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. This is the number that we'll have in the nap mapping, right? One with 18 decimal numbers if we deposit one BTC. And this token will be transferred, the RAP BTC will be transferred to the smart contract, and now we'll try to mint DSC tokens, okay? So here we add the amount DSC to mint. Now, what is the amount DSC that we want to mint in that case? Just choose a number. Let's say we deposit one Bitcoin and one BTC equals $2,000. So how many tokens do you want to mint? Let's, we are basically going through line by one and yeah, okay, let's say we want to mint 200 DSC tokens. Okay, so we deposited one BTC and we want to mint 200 DSC tokens. This is 10 times less, so it's pretty good, right? We can mint up to 1,000 based on the protocol description. We can mint 1,000 uh, DSC tokens, but we choose to mint only 200. So this mapping will be updated here with 200. So now we have 200 DSC in depth. Now, before we mint those DSC tokens, we run this function, Reval revert if health factor is broken. And this is where the problem is. So let's see how we calculate the 
uh, health factors. So this get account information, it's going to calculate our collateral value in USD to determine how many DC tokens we can actually mint. And get account collateral value, this is where it gets interesting. This is the function that iterates through all the assets that we deposited to the protocol, and it tries to calculate the USD value of them and summarize them into one number. So let's see how it works. It's basically going to iterate through all the collateral tokens, get the token address, right? Get the amount that we deposited on this token, right? And here, as you can see, I added a comment. Wrap PTC will be with eight decimals. We went through it already. We said that when we deposit it, the amount will be with eight decimal numbers. So this will be the amount over here. And we will add the, the value in USD. But before we add the value in USD, we need to get the USD value. So we have to get the USD value, right? We send the token and the amount. So in our example, we're going to send here the raw BTC address and the amount is going to be one with eight decimal numbers. Let's see what happens here. Here we're going to use the price feed of the raw BTC token to determine the USD price. Okay. So as you can see, we get the uh, price feed of the, the chaining price feed of the token, the raw BTC token. So this is the contract. This is the library that we use, that we wrote. So I'm not going to get now into the library, but this is the library that's supposed to give us the price of raw Bitcoin in dollars in eight decimal numbers. Okay. It returns it in eight decimal numbers, both for ETH and both for Bitcoin. So let's see what happens. We get a price over here. This is the price. And now we calculate the USD value. So this is the price that we got from Chainlink, multiplying it by the additional feed precision. The additional feed precision, if you remember, is one in 10 decimal numbers. So we convert it to 18 decimal numbers. We got eight decimals from Chainlink and we convert it to 18. Not this one, this one. So we, div we multiply it by the amount. The amount is with how many decimal numbers it's gonna be? Guys, I'm waiting for your answer. This amount, this, this parameter over here, how many? Did, yes, eight, exactly, because it was taken from our mapping, exactly. This is eight decimal numbers divided by precision. What is precision? How many decimal numbers is precision? You can see here already, 18, exactly. So this is gonna be 18. This is gonna be eight, and this is gonna be 18. So with how many decimal numbers we're gonna be left in USD value? Right, this is 10 multiplied by, sorry, this is eight multiplied by 10, uh, so which means this is 18. This is the amount, which is in the RabbitTC case, it's gonna be eight, and this is gonna be another 18. We're gonna be left with eight, guys. This one, this additional price fee precision, this is gonna be 10 decimal numbers, right? This amount is going to be how many decimal numbers? Eight. This precision is going to be how many? 18 decimal numbers. So this is, these are all the parameters that we have here in the formula, right? Eight multiplied by 10. We add it because it's like in a power of. So this is 18. This is also multiply and this is divide. So we're going to have here something like this. It's going to be eight plus 10 plus eight minus 18 because multiply is like we add uh, decimal numbers and division we remove. So the result of this is going to be eight decimal numbers. And this is bad. Do you see where I'm going? Why this is bad? Because in case of RAB BTC, because this amount is in eight decimal numbers and not in 18 decimal numbers, the USD value that we're going to get is also going to be in eight decimal numbers. Exactly. Now, why is it bad? Because we this USD value, we always assume that it's supposed to be 18 decimal numbers, but this is our credit in the system. And when it's with eight decimal numbers, it's so much lower than the actual amount that we are supposed to have in USD value. So when we calculate our RAP BTC collateral, it's going to be much, much lower number than it's supposed to be significantly lower, actually a fraction of raw BTC. So the system thing, instead of us having $2,000, because one BTC equals $2,000, we're going to have, I don't know, 0 0.000002, right? Divide it, remove 10 decimals, remove 10 zeros. And this is very bad, because when we calculate the health factor, we use this... Uh, 
our credit, our deposited assets in USD to to uh, we basically divide it by the mint tokens and the mint tokens is also in 18 decimal numbers you can see it over here let's go again to the health calculate health factor this function right we take this collateral adjusted for threshold so let's see this audit info this collateral adjuster threshold how many decimal numbers it's going to have eight right this one divided by multiplied by IE18, and this is gonna be also, this one will be IE18. So our threshold is, so this will be canceled IE18, and our threshold, basically, our health factor is gonna be with eight decimal numbers. So this, in case of rabbit, in case we minted DSC tokens and we provided RBTC, this health factor will be a number with eight decimal numbers, which is obviously lower than the minimum health factor, which is 18 decimal numbers. So if we deposit RubBTC BTC to the system, doesn't matter how much RubBTC we deposited, we cannot mint DSC tokens because when we try to mint it, the transaction will be reverted because our health factor, even if we deposit 1,000 Bitcoin uh, and we ask to mint $1, it's 10 times, it's in the power of 10, like, like 10 decimal numbers lower. That is my first rub btc collateral cannot be utilized to mean dc tokens due to incorrect get used the value calculation and here i basically left all left all the references for the calculation all this function that we went through right now and i simply explained that the in case we deposited at rub btc the get usd function which is eventually going to be also the get account collateral value function will return number in eight decimal numbers while our minty tokens is in 18 decimal numbers which means that always our health factor will be below minimum and here is a by the way i also added a poc so you can see that i created a poc over here on in the test file so this is basically the johnny test that you can see over here raw ptc cannot be used as collateral poc and yeah so as you can see here i deposited one btc one token with 18 that with eight decimal numbers i got the price of the RubBTC from the aggregator. Then I calculated how many tokens I want to mint. So I took 33% of my value. So I took the deposit amount multiplied by the price divided by three. So if I deposit $1,000, I want to mint $333. Now I approve this, um, I approve uh, the contract to spend our RubBTC tokens and I call this deposit collateral and mint DSC and I expect it to be reverted. And exactly that's what happened. The transaction reverted even though my health factor is supposed to be okay. So this is the POC that shows that actually you cannot mint with BTC, you cannot mint DSC tokens. It cannot be redeemed, right? So, and they cannot get DSC. So both they lose money and both this BTC will be stuck in the contract because in the accounting, the, there is no way to rescue tokens. So this rap BTC will be locked and the user won't get anything. Yeah, yeah, good question. It will work with USDC. Currently, the smart contract, this get USD value, get, get USD uh, function supports only uh, tokens with 18 decimal numbers. It's a very good point. Yeah, it will also work with USDC because it's six decimal numbers. By the way, guys, before I show you how I suggested to fix the issue do you have any ideas of what would be the way to fix it this get usd value because this is where the problem actually is okay we can either add decimal numbers so multiply or what can we do else here this is a problem you see this precision it's 1 e18 and it's constant value it's supposed to be a dynamic value so instead of precision we have to do something like token dot decimals so in that case we'll divide the number only with 18 in web btc it will be only eight decimal numbers instead of 18. this it should be a dynamic value based on the token guides not just a constant precision this is constant and this is exactly what i suggested over here modify the get usd value instead of using this uh, precision use token decimals instead. So we need to divide it to get the token decimals from the contract and divide this whole price USD calculation with the decimals instead of a constant uh, precision number. Make sense? Yeah, in that case, we wouldn't lose these 10 decimal numbers because we are losing them because we are dividing it by 1 E18, even though our amount is a e, um, E8, right? So eight divided by 18, we lose 10 decimal numbers. If this would be eight, then we wouldn't 
wouldn't, we wouldn't lose these 10 decimal numbers. And it will be normalized to 18 in the rub BTC example. In, it, and it will be dynamic. So if it will be USDC, then the decimal token decimal function will return 6. So we will remove here 6. And it will always return 18 decimal numbers. It depends on the token decimals. Additional fit precision, we don't need to change because Chainlink, if I'm not wrong, it always returns the price with eight, deci with, uh, eight decimal numbers. So we add 10 to normalize it to 18. Uh, but if the Chainlink price feed returns the number in different decimal numbers, then this additional price uh, feed precision need to be dynamic. Yeah. But I think in that case, they all, all of them return 8. Yeah, true. So yeah, but in now we don't use Amble UCC, so I would maybe uh, basically report it as a medium. It's like the USDT one. We didn't deploy it with USDT, but if we will deploy it with USDT, then it could be another issue because this additional fire pre precision is to normalize the price that comes back from channeling. And we are basically assuming that it will be eight, but now I see that um, you wrote that Ample USDC returns 18 decimal numbers. So in that case, it will be an issue, yeah. The price will be bad. So this also should be dynamic in that case. Now, the second uh, issue that I reported is that user can unfairly liquidate it right after depositing BDC because, because of this same issue that we got a price in eight decimal numbers and the health factor is going to be below minimum, even though we deposited one BTC and we didn't even borrow no, we need to borrow, sorry, we need to borrow something. But if we borrowed even one token, our health factor automatically can be low, can be low, below, below minimum. And it means that we're going to be subject to liquidation. So what a malicious actor could do, it simply can just monitor the mempool. And every time someone is calling this uh, function, um, what is this function? One second. Every time someone calls deposit collateral, uh, deposit and mint DSC or everyone, there is a current deposit of BTC. And the moment he mint DSC tokens, doesn't matter how many tokens, they can be subject to liquidated. Even though 200%, they have much more than 200%. Even they deposited 10 Bitcoin and minted one DSC, you can still liquidate them because of this price uh, issue. And a lot of users can lose money. So if I'm a malicious actor, I can just monitor the mempool seed the moment people deposit to our BTC and mint DSC tokens, I can front run them, and uh, not front run, sorry, back run, send a transaction that will be right after, liquidate them and just get their RAP BTC. I can steal the RAP BTC for them, right? Because I'm gonna send here RAP BTC, gonna send here the user address and the debt to cover. And I don't need to send much debt to cover, I just need to send the their debt in eight decimal numbers, even though the DC tokens is 18 decimal numbers. So I'm going to send just 0, 0.000 something DSC tokens and I will get older BTC from the contract. So we can leverage this liquidate function because of the issue with the raw BTC to steal all the raw BTC from the users that wanted to mint DSC tokens using this BTC. Make sense? So this is the other issue. The core issue is the same. I don't know if it will be accepted, but it's just a different attack vector. It's basically another impact, right? So users will lose their RBTC right after depositing it to the system. It's the same recommendation, the same fix, just different impact. The first impact is that the users cannot use it to mint tokens. But the second impact is, I don't know if it's valid to be honest, but I just I, I just thought about it, like how to exploit it. How, if I was an attacker, how would I exploit it? I would just monitor all the deposits and steal all the RBTC from the protocol providing very low amount, I will deposit wrapped ETH, right? Get some DSC tokens and use fraction of DSC tokens to steal all the wrapped BTC collateral. It's much more severe, in my opinion. It's the same core issue, but I reported it separately. You mean like, uh, so you mean uh, that uh, user, that user mean deposited wrapped BTC, he cannot mean then he can redeem it. You can liquidate yourself. You won't be able to redeem it. You won't be able to redeem it because of the health factor revert, the health factor calculation, but you will be able to attack yourself. But if there is some malicious actor that monitors the mempool and see your position, and it can just front run you and get your RBTC, you will have to attack yourself and liquidate yourself. So you'll have to deposit wrapped ETH, mint this, and then basically get those RBTC back.